Now the first thing that really helped me was taking these default poses in the rig and moving them just outside my timeline. I can reference my character and even reset the proportions if I need to. So if there's a storyboard, I like to scrub through and keyframe every time there was a pose change. This way, I can make sure I'm on model for each new pose. When it comes to actually moving this character, I like to move the pieces without the deformers first. This keeps the overall shape consistent. We can go in with a drawover to really help define that shape. And if I match my deformers to the drawover, it's more likely that I'm going to stay closer to my model than if I were just trying to do this freehand. I can even keyframe in front of my default pose. That way I can scrub back and forth or reset it completely in case I mess things up. The thing here is we want our pegs to be closed. We take a look at the bottom layer here and we press this arrow. You'll see that all of the hierarchy in this rig is showing. Not only is it complicated to look at, but if you notice, if we keyframe on the top with F6, it only keyframes the layer that we're on. By moving with the pegs open, it's really easy to lose control of where my keyframes are. But if we have our peg collapsed and now we keyframe, you'll see when we open, it keyframes every single part of this rig. That is really nice to keep everything together, especially at the beginning. So usually most rigs you see on a show will have a similar kind of hierarchy. They'll have a body shadow, a master for the body, and an upper and lower body peg. When I do my posing, sometimes I like to have the master peg closed, or I like to have my master peg open, but my upper and lower body pegs closed. So for example, when we're foreshortening this arm, we could move the arm like this, and then use our deformers, move the elbow in like that. If we take a look, our pivot point is way out here. So it may be better to leave the pivot point there and drag everything else down and go the other way. When we move our arm, it's kind of foreshortened, but the pivot point is still in a good spot. A good rule of thumb is when we're moving things, we kind of want to move large groups together instead of moving small groups first and then the larger groups. That's really going to make our pivot points go all over the place. We want to make sure, we want to go in, make sure that each piece of this rig is connected perfectly. So if you take a look here, we don't want any breaks in the joints. You can even use this render view to see some things that you might miss in the OpenGL. So take your time at this stage and really go over your poses with like a fine tooth comb and make sure they're perfect before you start animating. There's nothing worse than losing control of a rig in the middle of your scene. Pieces are flying everywhere. You don't know what's going on. It's extremely frustrating and it's really hard to get good animation if you don't really know how to use the rig. I remember I was super intimidated the first time I got a complex harmony rig and looking back it probably wasn't even that complicated. Remember, this is tough to do so you know, work your way up. Start with simple rigs. There's a lot of simple free rigs you can use on the internet and then kind of work your way up to more complex ones with deformers and master controllers. And kind of get a workflow for those. Okay, that's all I have for complex rigs, guys. So, yep. All right, bye.